All right, guys, this is Zev here. So I've managed to procure a Google Galaxy Nexus for this run, and what we have over here are the Xperia S and the Motorola Droid Razer XT910. All right, so before we begin, I shall mention that all these phones are off. So yeah, I'm gonna do a cold boot with them and then head into some synthetic benchmark programs. All right, so I'm just gonna try turning them all on at one shot, given how big and clumsy my hands are. Uh, hopefully this will work, so in three, two, one, go. Alright, that's all of them. Hmm, Nexus is leading the pack. Oh, okay. So, the Xperia S took that one by a hair. So right now we're just gonna be waiting for the X-T9 one o to finish booting up. And, oh yeah, so you may see Smart Bench over here, but I'm not gonna be using that as a benchmark test. It's apparently relatively unreliable, because sometimes I can get scores of like, say, in one of the categories, 2000 and then 2300, 2400 and below 2000. So I'm not gonna rely on that one. That's way too much fluctuations in the scores over there. Uh, yeah, and that's on a single unit. So right now I'm just gonna go into, okay, here, here and here. Oh, and if it matters any, this uh, Galaxy Nexus is new, so there's like not many applications that are stored inside it at all, so it should actually have the advantage when it comes to boot, comes to booting up, but eh, whatever. Alright, so quadrant, quadrant, and oops, that's one step too far. Quadrant, alright, so. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. In three, two, one, go. Oh, in case you guys are wondering what's playing in the background, that's pretty much the Blu-ray version for Riverdance Beijing. Come to think about it, the Razer should have the graphical advantage over here because it has much less much less pixels to push as compared to both the Nexus and the Xperia S. Resolution over here being 960 by 4 540, whereas these two over here have a resolution of 1280 by 720. Okay, so we're done with all three of them. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the Galaxy Nexus managed to procure 2,029 points, the Droid Razer 2,280 points, and the Xperia S at 3,100 points. Alright, so home, home, and home.
Uh, let's see. Next stop shall be Nenamark. Next page, Nenamark 2, Nenamark 2, Nenamark 2. Alright, I'm just going to turn the phones around now. Okay, does this fit? I oh, guess. Barely. Wow, keys for Nexus are very sensitive. Alright, so. In three, two, one. From what my eyes are telling me over here, the colors for the razor is actually very blown out of proportion compared to the Nexus and the and the Xperia S. And all right, they have there we have it. Same graphics card at almost the same speeds, and the Nexus had the disadvantage. Mainly because this has a higher resolution screen as compared to the Droid Razor, so you can see the performance difference over there. Uh, Alright, so back we go. And let's see, lastly, what we have down here is the Antutu benchmark. I'm not sure if I actually mentioned that right. Alright, so... And three, two, one, go. Oh, that was a lucky shot. And out of nowhere, do do do. Well, the ones with the TI OMAP chips are actually leading the pack this time around over the Qualcomm based Xperia S. Wow, look at the Razer push those numbers. Yay, Neandroid. Xperia S seems to be catching up. Oh dear, and I've got about 20 seconds of video recording time left with this camera. I may have to break this. Okay, I'm definitely ha gonna have to break this, so the video is gonna stop in a bit, and I'm just gonna press the record button again. Yeah. Thankfully, that made it in time. 
So the Razer and the Nexus have finished their runs and here comes the, well, what do you know? Okay, the Nexus scored 6,086 points, the Razer got 6,131 over there, and the, well, Xperia S got 6,623, and there you have it. And, well, wow, okay, this second part of the video didn't run long at all. And that's it for now, I guess. Thanks for watching.